Hello there and welcome to this week's IMTV Newscast. Coming up, titanium dioxide pigment producers Crystal and ISK increase prices for 2013. US Silica's revenue rockets thanks to strength in the oil and gas propens segment. And Pyramac Ceramics open ceramic propent manufacturing facility in Georgia. First today, chloride root titanium dioxide pigment producer Crystal has become the third of the big five producers to increase its prices for 2013, leaving just DuPont and Tronox yet to take a position on prices for the year ahead. The company will be increasing the prices on all Anatase and Rutiles Hyona and Crystal titanium dioxide products sold in North America, Europe, the Middle East, Africa, Latin America and the Asia-Pacific subregions from the 1st of April this year. Phil Bouchard reports. The increases have been implemented to compensate for the escalation of raw material feedstock and other input costs that have significantly compressed operating margins. In North America, Crystal will be hiking prices by 10 cents per pound, following a trend set by Kronos and Huntsman. In European markets, prices will increase by a minimum of $262.17, while in Russia, the CIS countries and other European markets, Crystal will increase prices by $300 per tonne. In Asia-Pacific, prices will be increased by $300 per tonne, and in Japan, one of the most important markets for titanium dioxide, prices will increase by approximately $220 per tonne. Asia's leading chloride root titanium dioxide producer, Ishiara Sangyo Keisha, will be increasing the price of TIPAC titanium dioxide by $300 per tonne in the Asia-Pacific region, effective from the 1st of April. U.S. Silica Holdings has announced positive results for the fourth quarter of 2012 and the fiscal year 2012 as the oil and gas segment continued to drive demand for the company's silica sand-based products. Net income was recorded at 79.2 million U.S. dollars, compared with 30.3 million for the full year 2011, while revenue totaled 441.9 million U.S. dollars, compared with 295.6 million in 2011. Overall, sales volumes increased during the year to 7.2 million tonnes. 14% above the 6.3 million recorded in 2011. Adjusted EBITDA was 150.6 million US dollars, or 34% of revenue, compared with 93.6 million US dollars, or 31.7% of revenue in 2011. U.S. Silica also said its new frac sand plant in Spargo, Wisconsin is on schedule and expected to be fully operational in the second quarter of 2013, adding approximately 800,000 tonnes of coarse 2040 and 3050 frac sand capacity to the company's portfolio. Now, don't forget, there is still time to register for the Oilfield Minerals Outlook event in Houston, Texas. All the details are on the website. Texas-based Pyramax Ceramics is set to open a 227,000 TPA ceramic propent manufacturing plant in Georgia next month to meet the needs of the growing US oil and natural gas industry. The new 200,000 square foot, $140 million facility will include two process lines, each consisting of a raw material preparation system, pelletization and kiln systems, loading operations and proprietary environmental controls. The first phase of construction will be lines one and two. These lines are expected to be completed next month in time for operations to begin by the spring. The company is also ready to complete two further independent process lines by 2015 if the market warrants the expansion. This week, Industrial Minerals reported live from PDAC 2013 in Toronto. Our reporters discovered Turkey's leading borate producer, Etimine, launched a tender process in December to exploit a rare earth deposit in Sevriyasar, which also contains barites and fluorite. The tender process was only open to domestic companies and only four applied. The site holds the potential to produce 10,000 TPA rare earths, 72,000 TPA barites and 70,000 TPA fluorite. 
Also at the event, Centurion Mining revealed that Myanmar is rejecting Chinese investment in favour of a more balanced revenue stream to develop its mining sector. The sovereign state is targeting countries including the US, Canada and the UK to develop its untapped mineral resources including barite, bentonite and chromite. At the moment, mining contributes 6.95% of foreign direct mining. There are 1,700 mining permits generated, 3% belonging to companies outside of Myanmar. Rare earths are now deemed the industrial minerals most at risk of supply shortage. That's according to the British Geological Survey. Their latest risk list highlights economically important elements that are at risk of supply disruption. Rare earths have switched to a supply risk index of 9.5 compared to 8.0 in 2011, when the minerals were in fifth place. Antinomy, which was at the top of the list last year, now sits third, although its rating has increased from 8.5 to 9. The biggest mover on the risk list is barium, also known as barites, which has moved up from 31 to 8, measuring 8.1 on the risk list. Barites has seen a surge in demand and price over 2012 due to its use in oil fields drilling. Oil field activity has increased over the past couple of years, especially in the hydraulic fracturing sector due to a widespread drive for new and alternative energy sources. Graphite supply risk, meanwhile, has moved from 7.0 to 8.1, moving it into the top 10 highest risk raw materials. Floor spar, or fluorine, has also moved up the scale, reaching an at-risk ratio of 6.7, up from 4.5. It now ranks 26, up from 38 in 2011. And finally, quality, not quantity, will determine who wins the race to harness the potential of graphene science, according to British consulting firm Cambridge IP. First discovered in 2004 by physicists at the UK's Manchester University, graphene science has seen a surge of patents being filed since 2007, and the pace of research has accelerated in the last 12 months. While most of the smaller inventors tend to be based in the US, Chinese and South Korean research is mainly being conducted by large corporations. Asian nations are leading the charge. China has 2,204 published patents compared to only 54 in the UK. Now, before we go, don't forget you can meet us at IM's Bauxite and Illumina conference taking place in Miami from the 13th to the 15th of March. Details, as always, can be found on our website. And a reminder that you can take out a corporate subscription to IM that benefits you and your staff. Contact hdobson at indmin.com. Well, that's all we have time for this week. If you have any comments or feedback, we'd love to hear from you. You can get in touch via Twitter, at Indmin, or find us online. Thanks for watching, and see you again soon.